want to test our wood gears to make sure they turn freely. Let's take a piece of scrap, drill some holes at the correct axle spacing, put a couple of pegs in there, and give them a spin. That looks pretty good. Now I need a spacer under here for the next test. And this gear will be turned by the electric motor. Now I can see that this turns quite freely. The electric motor will turn this at 19 RPM, which is about that fast. And the output gear, or the one on the crankshaft, will be turning about 60 RPM. I have constructed a wood crankshaft. This is a 7 8 throw. And connecting rods will pass down to the bellows. Originally, I had intended for my motor mount to be in here, and this shaft would pass through this upper bearing block part of the motor mount. But my gear doesn't quite clear. I'm off by about a millimeter. So now, this will be back here, and there will be one more idler gear, one-to-one. -one. As soon as I'm sure the glue is dry, I'll come in here and cut the crankshaft, get these pieces out of here so it will work correctly. I've got these two spacers. There's just a little end play in there, so that can move back and forth just a little bit. The motor's installed, the idler gears, two additional bearing blocks to support this crankshaft, and a fan blade off of a computer cooling fan. When the crankshaft is powering the bellows, there will be quite a bit of force on this crankshaft. And making this out of wood is an experiment at best. But I figure if I can turn this crankshaft by hand and force this gear train backwards without breaking the crankshaft, then it's probably going to be strong enough. I made these two pieces to go around the crankshaft. Screwed them together and then drilled the 5 16 hole. Put this down in here. Put a piece of wood behind it to hold it. Give me a chance to start these screws. want that snug, you don't want to over tighten it or you'll probably break this piece. We check it to make sure it's going to clear, and it does. We can run it with the motor. Both bellows are connected. There's about 101 pinch points on this thing. This is not something you want to reach into when it's running. And with the unit working upside down, you can see the two bellows operating. I have the connecting rod pinned to this plate 
with a 3 16th inch doll. The connecting rods need to clear the reservoir when it's in the inflated position and these just barely clear. When this is operating, the pressure relief valve will be spring loaded closed. There will be constant spring pressure on this holding this down. And this operates up and down with that spring pressure and that's what regulates the constant airflow to the pipes. So this will all be adjusted to continuously supply 5 inches of water pressure to the pipes. And a lot of this is what is not normally shown in how the busker operates. Ordinarily this would be a metal crankshaft, uh, it would be wood connecting rods. The rest of it is pretty much the same. The uh, gear motor drive, of course, is, is not what's normally done. I have just a little weight sitting on top of this relief valve. I partially block the discharge and you can see the bellows operating in the fluctuation of the reservoir.